Hi, my name is Carlo. Welcome to the vlog. Today I'm going to talk about what I think is the perfect commuter bike in the Philippines. Perfect commuter bike for me in the Philippines. But before we get to that, I saw a Facebook post showing like the different kinds of bikes that you can choose. And then the, the post is in Tagalog. Let me apologize ahead. My Tagalog is not great. I don't know who made the post. It's from it's from a Facebook page co called Maribeth Brown's Web. It tries to answer which bike is best for you. I'm going to put a link to the post in the show notes so you can check it out yourself. But I'm going to go through each bike and give my own uninformed opinion about each bike. Okay, so the first bike is a mountain bike. It says here... It is the usual choice, uh, mga my budget. It, a mountain bike is definitely a versatile bike if you want to go commuting. Generally speaking, if you're going to go commuting, you're going to go through the Philippines, like the roads, which are not great, but also not horrible. So I think it's too much bike for Philippine roads. Wheels are too big. But uh, for a lot of people, a mountain bike would be pretty good because it is quite affordable. You can buy a cheap bike, but again, as I said, a lot of times, if you buy a cheap bicycle, you get what you pay for. Something usually breaks. But you can... Mountain bikes, they're the most common and they're easy to find and thus quite affordable. The mountain bike is not alien to a lot of people. So if you're thinking about mountain bikes, go for it. It's uh, it's alright. It's a good choice. BMX. Uh, according to this, the BMX is the walang arten bike. <laughs> it's the cheapest bike if you buy like a cheap BMX. You can also buy a really expensive BMX. The, uh, the, the problem with the BMX is that it's usually quite small and it can be difficult to use a BMX if you are going long distances. So if you have like a ride, a commute that is more than 10 kilometers, maybe even 5 kilometers, over the long run, it, it's going to be quite tedious to use. A BMX is not meant for longer distances. But it's really cheap. You can find a cheap BMX in a lot of places. So BMX might be the way to go if you're in like a super budget and you don't need to travel that long. Maybe within 5 kilometers. Maybe a BMX would be good. So the next one here is a road bike. Road bikes would be, I think, my preference. Uh, ideally, maybe a 28. Well, not really my preference, but we'll get to that. So a road bike is good. I'd get like the ones with a 28 millimeter tire just to make it a little thicker because the, as I said, Philippine roads don't tend to be that good. But road bikes tend to be a little more expensive than mountain bikes and BMX. But the road bikes are good because if you get used to the if you get used to the position, they're the fastest and the most comfortable in terms of positions. Because you get a lot of uh, you get a lot of hand positions, you the road bikes, you typically have drop bars, so you can go to the drops if it gets really windy. So road bikes are good, especially if you have to commute a long distance. And they're faster than mountain bikes. Folding bikes. Oh, folding bikes are fun. I've never used a folding bike, but in theory, I think a folding bike would be good, especially if you find yourself using a car and then having to walk a short distance from where you usually park on a regular basis. So the folding bike would be perfect for that. You can put a folding bike in your inside your car and you can even bring it up to your office. If you live in a condo, that might be the most or the best bike for you because you can make it small and put it up on your wall or something. So the folding bike is good. I think the, the folding bikes would be fun commuter bikes. Never tried it, but in theory, it should be pretty good. Ooh, mini velo. AKA Mini Racer. Also, I've never tried a Mini Racer, but according to this, ito yung speed, maneuverability, and forma. <laughs> yeah, they do look nice. The Mini Velo looks look nice. They look like road bikes with much smaller tires. According to this, size 20. I don't know what that means. Size 20. Magaan pa jakin. Dahil kompleto sa gearing. Na wala ang BMX. So yeah, BMX don't really. They're single speed bikes. So the Mini Velo, you can have gears. They're just like road bikes, but um, smaller wheels. Looks really nice, I must say. Mini MTB. I'm not. I am not sold on this one. It's like they're like uh, BMX bikes, but they come with gears. They look like children's bikes, honestly. Not too sold on it, but they're cheap. I have bought one of these. 
I bought one for my so what for one of my workers and it's it was good it was cheap I think I bought mine for five thousand pesos six thousand pesos she was able to use it also I think she was able to use it because she was quite short so this one worked for her she'd probably feel like it would be if I bought her like a big mountain bike that would be definitely quite difficult for her I think and then she's been using the mini MTB fat bike I don't know why you would use a fat bike to commute honestly it seems like a lot of bike just to commute tires are huge same as the same as a mountain bike to me I don't know why it's just too much bike fat bikes typically are used for like icy conditions or on the sand like going up to the beach something like that so definitely too much bike for commuting if you use a fat bike yeah I, I can't I don't know why you would use a fat bike oh the Japanese bike so these are those little U bikes the some people call it the lady bike these tend to be pretty good choices I think because they're really cheap you can find a lot of these Japanese bikes in surplus stores and a lot of times they already come with a basket uh, I, I these are pretty good bikes I mean I don't it lacks the sexy factor in my opinion but like they look they're nice they're good 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 commuter bikes and then the last on this list on the internet that you can find the link on below is the fixed gear fixed gear premium rush if you've seen the movie premium rush you know what a fixed gear is no brakes brakes are death if you are going to get a commuter bike if this is your first time cycling and you want and you've been thinking about getting a commuter bike I'll get into it more I would get a bike very similar to a fixed gear but I wouldn't make it fixed gear I would make it uh, let me get before yeah you know what before I talk about too much about the fixed gear let me show you what I think is the best commuter bike in my opinion that's the, what I, that's what I would let me show you what I think is the best commuter bike If you ask me, the perfect commuter bike would be something like this. Now, it's not a fixed gear. Well, this is a fixed gear bike. The nice thing with a lot of fixed gear bikes is you can set it up in such a way that it doesn't have to be fixed gear. You can make it a, si a simple single speed bike. When you make it single speed, that means you can freewheel. That means you can stop pedaling and the bike will continue to coast along. If, it, if it's fixed gear, then you'll need to always pedal because fixed gear means your crank the thing that you're turning with your pedals is is fixed to the wheel in the back so the wheel in the back is turning so do your legs and your pedals they don't stop they don't stop turning if you stop turning that's how you brake using the fixed gear fixed gear will not be a good option for a beginner cyclist uh, but you know if you have the time if you have the willingness to learn like I did I was able to learn how to ride a fixed gear then that's what I got but basically a single speed bike can look exactly like this but not fixed gear so it'll coast for me the main advantage of getting a single speed bike is you can get a really good bike at an affordable price anywhere from 10 to 15,000 pesos or you can get it even cheaper if you look at like Facebook marketplace there's so many people selling their old fixed gear bikes that you can convert to single speed even the most affordable single speed bikes can look nice like I think I personally like the minimalist aesthetic the other nice thing about it being really affordable is that the reality is living in the Philippines you can't there's not really many places to park your bike and when you do park it it can be in places that you might not have the best confidence <laughs> now granted I've never had a bike stolen, but I do know people who've had their bikes stolen. So if you have a single speed bike, if somebody steals it from you, suck it, it hurts a little bit, but Kaira, it's not, you're not losing an arm and a leg. You can, you can save up and buy a new one fairly easily. So for me, that is the biggest advantage of getting a single speed bike. You can get a really nice single speed bike for not a lot of money at all. Because let's say you get an MTB for the same amount of money. It's probably not going to be a nice bike at 15,000 pesos. Something might 
something is likely to break right away. You know, you have a lot more things that can break. There's gears that can break, a derailleur that can fall off. There are just more components that can go wrong, especially if you buy a cheap geared bike. On the other hand, if you buy a single speed bike, it can be quite affordable and there's a lot less things that can go wrong. So especially if you're like a beginner cyclist, you don't have to worry too much about tuning your, your gear so, so that you can shift properly, all that sort of things. You don't have to worry about that at all. And single speed bikes look really nice, minimalist aesthetic. Like this, like my bike, my bike, I like, I personally like how my bike looks. It used to be blue and then I spray painted it white and black. If you look closely, I did a really bad job at spray painting it. But from afar, I think it looks alright. A lot of fixed gear slash single speed bikes tend to be customized in, a, in some degree. People like changing the colors, putting stickers, changing little bits and parts to make it more theirs. So that's the nice thing about a single speed or a fixed gear bike. But it does have its own set of disadvantages. If you live or if your commute has any hills whatsoever and you're just starting out as a cyclist, a single speed bike is going to be difficult. It is very difficult to climb up a hill on a single speed bike. The lack of gears will show really quickly. So on a regular bike, you can change gears. If you go up a hill, you can change gears and make, your, make it easier to pedal. With a single speed or a fixed gear bike, you cannot change gears. There are no gears. On the other hand, that might make you a stronger cyclist in the long run. But if you're not interested in all of that and if you just want to commute, that might not be for you if you have a lot of hills in your commute. Also, another disadvantage is that if you end up loving cycling or liking cycling, you might end up buying a geared bike in the future anyway. I re honestly, I really love this bike. I really love this, my fixed gear bike, but I ended up buying another bike because I realized that I like cycling around Cebu and going up the mountains. And going up a mountain on this bike is really, really, really difficult. The other thing with a lot of single speed bikes and fixed gear bikes is you can add a basket. Some of the frames allow you to put a basket. In fact, my this bike used to have a front basket. So you can do that and that really helps in commutes. And the other thing with a lot of the single speed fixed gear bikes, depending on the frame, you can even add uh, fenders. So it's annoying sometimes when it rains and then you do, and then you have the water splashing on your back. So you, sometimes you can get single speed or fixed gear bikes with fenders. I don't have one right now, but I usually have like a little thing in the back of the something here like I put something here that can like a rain guard I don't know what it's called because if I were being honest if money was not an issue and then I wasn't worried about like somebody stealing my bike the perfect commuter bike would be for me anyway some sort of road bike that you can put thick tires and full-on fenders and full-on racks that would be great but I think uh, if you're talking about practicality and you're living in a flat-ish area or your commute is pretty much flat and you're looking at budget lack of maintenance you don't have to maintain it so much I don't I have not maintained this well at all and it's been running pretty okay for like three years now then a single speed or a fixed gear bike should be for you. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions about commuting, I made another video about the basics of commuting in the Philippines. I'll link to it somewhere in the show notes or on the, somewhere here. I'll link to it. If you enjoyed this or if you have any more questions, feel free to put questions in the comments. And I hope that was useful. So if you found it useful, Subscribe to the channel, that helps out a lot, and hit the like button as well. More videos soon. Bye!